Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Career Brand Story, a podcast that provides expert career coaching every week. I'm Jeremy Tudor, and on today's show, we're going to be talking about how to reposition your career in a down economy. I want to welcome back today's guest, Jeb Graff, commercial photographer and creative consultant and our producer for The Career Brand Story podcast. Hi, Jeb. How are you doing today? Wonderful, Jeremy. That sounded sarcastic, but I really am doing wonderfully. It's been a good morning. Uh, well, and the weather is beautiful this weekend, I think, for most of us um, here in the South. So I'm looking forward um, to a, a wonderful weekend. I don't know about you guys. Yes, yes. I also want to welcome Jamie Thorpe, uh, a senior consultant at Deloitte. Uh, Jamie is one of my favorite past clients. Um, I always love talking to her, and I'm so excited to have you on the show with us today. She recently transitioned careers when it seemed like a difficult move to make, and so really looking forward to diving deeper into her story. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for having me today, and I'm honored that you would invite me for this particular podcast, and you're one of my favorite people to talk to. Oh, well, we've got got all of our favorite people here this morning talking to one another. That's awesome. Well, let's just jump into your story. Um, Why don't we just start with a little bit about um, where you were um, in your career? Um, And, um, you know, there was a point where you even reached out to me and, and we worked together and to where you got to today. Sure. So let me just start out by saying that um, reaching out to you was one of the best decisions or was a part of one of my decisions on my journey. So for more than 12 years, I commanded the classroom teaching some of my favorite subjects such as math and science. And then for the past six years, I spent consulting in the education arena. My day to day responsibilities included writing proposals, analyzing school districts data to give them different recommendations on how to improve specific areas within their school district and teacher training. So I really enjoyed certain aspects of consulting um, in the education arena, but in order to make an impact in schools, I had to analyze the data and that was part of the job that I really enjoyed since I was able to see the real results. And so turning the data into actionable insights really interests me, but using tools to help me with that process to make my job much more efficient and to help me expand my territory was something that I realized that I was missing. So I probably thought about expanding my territory for about a year. How was I going to do that? What plan you know, was I going to put in place? And so then it took me a year to put the plan in action. And so what I realized is you can't optimize what you don't measure. And so data really was the driving force here to help me expand my territory along with using tools. Well, in the data analytics space, right, in the job market is um, still fairly new. Um, and a really growing space across all industries. Um, What did you do to um, be able to learn those tools and and pick up those tools? Because certainly that wasn't, you, you, you went to school and became a teacher, which by the way, let's just side note that for just a minute. Thank you for your service as a teacher. That is such a a huge sacrifice. Um, And I just appreciate um, the time that you gave to young people in that. Um, But obviously you didn't go to school um, and learn all these data analytic tools and things that you needed. Um, You weren't going to teach the kids, you know, um, Tableau or, uh, you know, pivot charts and, 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 and V lookups. So what did you do to, to be able to grow your skill set in that? So um, in when I was consulting in education, I was already using Excel for to analyze the data. And I was doing some basic visualizations within Excel using pie charts and bar um, charts. And so what I did was I did a lot of research out there on data analytics, although it's relatively new. There were lots of programs that were targeted towards data science and analytics. And so 
it took me about six months to a year just to, re- to research that because I was weighing my options out. Do I need to really spend the money on a, another master's degree when I already had a master's degree and what the outcomes would be from these different pathways. And so I really came up with going to Georgia Tech for their data science boot camp program because I felt like that program was going to give me the tools that I needed to further my career or to pivot my career, if you will. So um, what was probably the hardest thing about this entire transition for you? Dealing with my emotions. Um, Anytime you are thinking about changing your career, repositioning your career from something that is where you're comfortable to where you're uncomfortable, you're having to deal with your emotions. So I had a range of emotions. I was excited. I was nervous. I was uncertain what the end would be, where I was really going. So because I am a tightly wired person, I think about the beginning, the middle, the end, the pros, the cons. And so really what I had to do was let some of those things go and just put it into action and disregard all of my emotions. Did you expect it to take as long as it did? No, I actually thought that I could just make a change and it would, the results would pop up tomorrow. But there was a process to that. The process was thinking about making the change, dealing with my emotions, and then putting the change into action. And then after putting it into action, still watching it grow, the action grow. So after going to school, I then had to look for a job and I had to prepare myself for different types of interviews, different than what I was accustomed to going through as a consultant in education. A technical interview, maybe doing whiteboarding or being asked technical scenarios. So that was the difficult process. And I probably would say I had an overall um, amount of like 15 different interviews. And so that was very stressful because each interview asked different types of technical interviews. And so you really just had to study. um, I had to study on uh, my technical skills after school, because if you're not programming every day, that's a skill that you can lose. So I had to practice every day after I graduated and and be prepared for my technical interviews. Yeah. And I think if I remember right, um, like when we engaged, um, I don't know that you had fully, the first time we engaged, I don't think that you'd even decided on the Georgia Tech um, data bootcamp yet. There, There was kind of this iteration of space between you know, you know, I, I'm consulting, I'm trying to figure out where to go next. And, and we talked a lot about that and focused your resume in the best way we could for whatever was next. Then it, I think you went through the data boot camp, and then we came back and kind of refocused all of your marketing, you know, to where it was. So there, there definitely was this process and this journey, you know, for you to go on. Yes. So initially when you and I talked, I was on this journey of, I'm not really sure. I'm in this consulting space. What do you think about this? This is where I think I might want to go, but I'm not really sure. And so I actually was engaged with the program um, manager and exploring that opportunity, but I was still having to take a test to get into the program. So I wasn't truly accepted, but I was thinking about going to the program. So I think we talked about, you know, certain aspects of what this might or could bring to me as a career if I repositioned my career. Yeah. So what did you do to overcome negative feelings during this? There's the ups and the downs. So what do you what did you do during the low moments um, to help you continue to, to stay on course? 
I'm glad you asked that question because there is a component of negative feelings as you are trying to reposition your career. So I would say that the main thing that helped me to overcome my negative feelings would be um, the opposite of that is combating that with positive thinking. So oftentimes I would say to myself, Jamie, what do you have to lose if you do this? That question would often come up. And of course, I would answer myself and say nothing. <laughs> and so I, I thought about lots of different things. I was raised in a family of women who were true courage catalysts. And I also leaned on that. So ultimately, my faith was the bridge that I needed to overcome all of my negative feelings. And one thing that I wish I would have known then when I was in the program that I now know for sure is that I learn more and more how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. So as I am on my job currently, I have to keep that in mind is that it's okay to be uncomfortable when starting a new career because I was in this arena previously in education where I had devoted so much of my time and I was so comfortable in that space. So anytime you're starting something new, you're going to be uncomfortable. And that's when you are in the true growth zone is when you're uncomfortable. So I am now comfortable with being uncomfortable. Oh, wow. and that that is such, I think, a, such an important lesson for people to learn. Um, I know that I'm still learning that. Um, I've been having those feelings just this week. I went through some training, um, you know, growing a business and um, was talking to one of our team members that I feel like I've just jumped off into the deep end without the swimmies. Right. And it is it's uncomfortable. It's like I, I don't know what I don't know. And I think a lot of people um, that that fear of not knowing that fear of being uncomfortable um, keeps us from, from growing. It keeps us from the opportunities that could lead us into wonderful new jobs, um, life-giving jobs. Um, so I think that that is so powerful, um, that you've learned that and, um, are okay in that spot. That's a hard thing to do. I think for a lot of people. Yes. And it is, ac it's actually something I work on every day. And one other reminder, you talk about fear. Fear is the roadblock to destruction, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And so anytime I feel like fear is coming ahead or I feel, feel fearful in a situation, I really try to cast those fears down very quickly because that can be a roadblock to my success. And so I don't need a roadblock. And I, like I said, I feel like being uncomfortable is a space that we all need to be in at some point in our lives so that we can experience true growth. And for the world we're sitting in today, right? We are in an uncomfortable place. If we're <laughs> going to grow and learn from dealing with COVID-19 to dealing with Black Lives Matter. I mean, this is, this is an opportunity for all of humanity um, to get really uncomfortable and be okay with it right now. True. There's a lot of uncertainty. And so you just have to take a deep breath and you can only control what you can control. And so whatever it is that's within your control, just do the best that you can do with what you have. Yeah. Think positively about that. So um, how has your life now changed since you repositioned your career? Oh, my gosh, Jeremy, my life has changed. So much since, you know, we last engage and you helped me with my resume and and just having a conversation with me about my career. And even as I get up every day, I think about how my life has changed and I'm still in all of that. Right. So let me just start out by saying many ways. I have two ways that I want to kind of talk about how my life has changed. And so one of the things that I did when I 
embarked upon this data journey was to immerse myself in a data community. And the reason why I did that is because being a part of a community helps to support you on your journey. So I'm now a part of a, a community that, em, that I feel embraces me. I'm a board member of Women in Data, the Atlanta chapter, which is a nonprofit organization with a mission to increase diversity in data careers. And we provide awareness, education, and advancement to women in the tech industry, specifically in analytics, data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. So I really enjoy being a part of this group and their mission. And then secondly, one of the ways, the biggest ways that my life changed is that I accepted a position as a senior consultant at Deloitte in the strategy and analytics practice. And being offered that job at Deloitte was just so exciting. And every day, and I started in the midst of COVID-19. Yeah. So think about that. Not COVID-19 was uncertain. Changing my career was uncertain. Everything was uncertain. But I was still excited and very nervous. And I had other offers, but I chose Deloitte for so many reasons. Um, one was their career opportunities that that's within the organization, their innovation, being a part of the smartest and the, the brightest. Um, they have a big diversity and inclusion, inclusion initiative, which we talk about, you know, a lot of the current events that are going on in the world, Black, Live, Black Lives Matters, being um, a minority in the tech space. They have a lot of offering in the learning and development arena as well. So I am just so excited about my job and and how they've embraced me and as well as the women in data chapter, the Atlanta chapter and how they've embraced me. So my life has changed in a lot of ways. I have new friends. I have a new career. It's exciting and nervous all at the same time. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, joy just exuberates from you um, in this whole um, story and where you are today. Um, and it seems very obvious to me that this journey has brought you to a place where you truly are thriving in your life and doing what you love. Um, and I just think it's amazing and awesome. And I'm so glad that I've gotten to be a part of a piece of that journey. Uh, it's a small piece, but I'm so glad that I've gotten to be a, a part of that and, and to be able to see you thriving today. No, I'm, I'm thankful for your guidance and just even your true friendship. After I accepted the job at Deloitte, I remember sending you a message in LinkedIn and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to thank Jeremy. <laughs> because even when I was feeling discouraged and uncomfortable and uncertain, you always um, said positive things to me and gave me things to think about, positive thoughts to think about. So I felt like I needed to grab back towards people who were a part of this journey, who were always encouraging to me. Yeah. Gratitude is so important and to express and, but you did the hard work and uh, we're excited um, for, to continue to hear more about your journey and your story ahead. Um, I think that um, the world is going to see some pretty big things from Jamie Thorpe. Thank you. Hey, I'm Brie Olson and I'm a career brand story writer for Jeremy Tudor. And here is this week's career tip. You do not have to get more education to make more money. One myth people believe is in order to make more money, I have to get more education. Sometimes this is true, but education is not the only way to bring in more revenue or to change career paths. In fact, in many cases, more education only leads to more debt. This takes you further away from meeting your financial goals and thriving in your career. Career repositioning can be daunting, but there are ways to do it that do not require you to go back to school. In this case, you do not have to spend money to make money. Here are some ways to make steps towards a new, higher paying career without further education. Make a referral network strategy and network your way into the higher paying job that you want. Make a career direction plan with a series of steps to get from where you are to where you want to be. Success doesn't happen overnight. Get a bridge job. A bridge job is a job that gets you a little bit closer to where you want to be long-term. It might not be your end goal, but it is a step in the right direction. 
Find a mentor in your desired field to help you reach your goals. Finally, apply to jobs that seem out of your reach. Seriously, you are capable of learning on the job. No one knows what they're doing at the beginning of a new job anyway. And now is the time to take a risk. Remember, education is not the only path to success. You can find our referral network strategy and our career direction plan PDFs on our website. Just go to jeremytutor.com and click on the COVID-19 resources banner at the top of the page. These resources are free through June 2020, so take a risk and start thriving. Well, changing careers can be risky, but so worth it to find an occupation which really aligns with your values. Um, I was recently coaching a client um, that was repositioning their career in a new organization. Uh, they held a senior position, uh, but the environment was really toxic uh, for too long, and they were ready for a healthy change. And their immediate concern when I talked to them, and understandably, was missing a big bonus that they had worked really hard to receive. And so just the timing of when they would accept the new job to when maybe that bonus was going to come out, you know, they were trying to figure out, you know, um, if this new job required them to start before the bonus payout, do I take it? What do I do? And was it really worthy to, wor worth it for them to really stay in an unhealthy workplace a little bit longer? And this was my encouragement to them. And this is my encouragement to everyone who is really thinking about a career transition and repositioning yourself um, for you know, that new position. And especially right now, um, in the job economy that we're in, in this COVID-19, I don't know whether to call it like, like we're in the middle of COVID-19 still or post COVID-19. I think we, we classify, we're kind of still in the middle of this, even though we're seeing our economy open back up. The reality is, is that our, the job economy in our world has shifted and changed. And so my encouragement to everyone in this is that you've got to play the long game. Um, bonuses are always going to come. Um, you know, uh, job opportunities are actually always going to come, but making sure that you are um, jumping into the right job opportunity um, requires that you play the long game, that you don't take all the short term um, benefits and use those as the catalyst to make you move. Um, and so, you know, I told that client, I wouldn't even be putting the bonus into the equation. Um, and I think that she heard that in theory, but then, you know, in practicality, that was a hard pill to kind of swallow. But moving forward to a healthy environment, uh, to a more whole self, it, I don't know that you can put a price on that. Um, and as we talked that out, she even admitted to me that, you know, hey, I've gone to the doctor more times over this last year than I ever have because of stress, right? So these things start to actually calculate and, and add up actually in a monetary value. And so again, I was like, play the long game um, because at the end of the day, this really is about thriving in your life and finding that balanced lifestyle for you. Playing the long game requires you, I think, to find your voice and to really affirm your values and when you're affirming those values, even when it's difficult, uh, you know where you stand. Um, and and, the, and it, while the, the situation can be difficult, I think having your values and your voice affirmed in difficult um, times helps you make better decisions. Um, so one of the things that my team worked on this week um, that we're going to be putting out is we are going to put out this values clarification uh, kind of quick uh, chart that you can plug in different values that might be important to you. Um, you know, one of my biggest values is, is about living a wholehearted life. Um, that means embracing vulnerability and courage. And, um, and, and that's just an important thing to me and what I do. And so I've tried to build a business and a company um, that's really around that value. Um, another value that's really important to me is trust over suspicion. Um, and so everyone who works with me on my team, we work really hard to have open communication and to have trust um, with one another, um, even if we don't always know uh, what might be going on um, at a particular moment, we really work hard to to assume there's trust before we're suspicious, you know, of one another. Uh, another thing is about creativity. Um, you know, I value that 
But I also have to recognize that in a highly productive world that, you know, what I produce at the end of the day is enough Um, that, you know, not everything has to be perfect. Not even this podcast has to be perfect. I can make mistakes on this podcast and that's okay because I'm still enough. Right. So those are some of my key values that I really try to make sure that are in my work life. And I think that when you come down and you kind of come up with a list, um, then do these align with what you see, you know, um, in the job that that you're taking. Um, And if they are, you're going to end up thriving more in that job. Um, Jamie, as you kind of talked about Deloitte, I mean, talked about some things that were important to you around like their diversity and inclusion, um, you know, uh, their learning um, opportunities. Um, what what are some of the top values for you um, that you see being played out that you share with with the company? Um, that's a good question, Jeremy. One of the things, uh, well, I had several things um, in terms of value, which would be the opportunity for advancement and the opportunity to lead. And so Deloitte is really big on diversity and that not just in ethnicity, but gender. And so I saw that there were lots of women that were leading. They were, they had the opportunity for advancement. So that gave me the inspiration that I needed to be a part of Deloitte. And then having supportive management. My management is very supportive. As you stated before, when you make mistakes, it's okay. You're not perfect. And so my management is just that. They're very supportive. Okay, so let me, as long as I don't mind uh, criticism, as long as it's an opportunity for me to grow and to learn. And so it's just that I feel like being a part of Deloitte and being a part of the management team that they are embracing me and it's okay to make mistakes. And so uh, I definitely would say risk taking was another one. Um, Mm. I'm a risk taker. And so that's very important to be a part of an organization that embraces that. So at Deloitte, there's so many different avenues, so many different areas of practices that you can go through or be a part of. And they definitely embrace risk taking. Um, so when you, when you consider this, the, this new job for you, um, were values more important to you over, all of us know money speaks still, right? We all want to work jobs where we make great money. Um, I don't know anyone out there who doesn't want that, but for you in taking this job, were values more important? Yes, they were because, um, being in education, you're not going to be a millionaire. What? <laughs> so, what? <laughs> I came from a space where I wasn't making, you know, lots of money. So I wanted to be, my values were really important because I felt like I wasn't getting that in my current space. And so it sounds like an oxymoron to some people because you career you want to change careers most times for the money. That's what most people think, but it's just not for the money. It is also, it has to align with your values. And one of the things that I looked at was being given the opportunity and not only that, but growing where you're planted. And that's very important to me because life is about evolving. And if you're not growing and learning, you become stagnant, then you become bored. So then the money becomes obsolete. I mean, it's nice to have money. It's an it's it's a nice thing to have. But I didn't come from a space where I was being paid a lot of money. So I wanted to consider, you know, some other things, my values. And that really came into play when I made that ultimate this final decision. Yeah, I I I've I come across so many clients who um I think are making money the main motivator. Um, and what you find, and, and, I'm, and I'm talking about people who are in high executive positions, um, they're not happy with life. They're, they're not excited about getting up on Monday morning. And it always comes down to this conversation around, okay, let's clarify your values. Let's really talk about what's important. Um, 
because at the end of the day, you know, we all know you, you're not taking your money with you when you leave this side of the earth. Um, you know, and so, um, it's, there's gotta be for me personally. And I, I, I think all of us on, on this podcast today, um, share this, the same value is that there has to be, our work needs to be meaningful, you know? Um, and I love that illustration about, you know, planting yourself and allowing yourself to grow where you're at, um, and being able to make that impact. That's really great. Yeah. Um, one of the things i I wanted to mention is when I interviewed at Deloitte, one of the partners, he asked, hey, are there any other questions you have that I can answer? And so one of the questions I asked him was, what is it about Deloitte that you like? And he had been at Deloitte for, I don't know, maybe 15 years plus. And his answer to me was like the ultimate answer that made me want to be a part of Deloitte. Because after being in his job for so long, he gave me a lot of great values, um, explanation of the values why he liked Deloitte. And one of the things he mentioned was liking the people you work with and having that meaningful work. He felt like his work was meaningful. He liked the people he worked work with. He's growing and he's learning. So if someone who has been a part of the organization for that long, certainly for someone like me coming in new at the doors, that was something I wanted to be a part of. That was, we had a common value there. And so that made me to want to be a part of the organization even more. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's the shared affirmed values that you have with one another um, that build a great culture. Um, right. For employees to come together, be engaged. Um, and again, working towards doing meaningful work together. That's really awesome. Brand is not just a logo, a color or a catchphrase. It's custom. It's your language, your culture, your vibe and so much more. So why leave your brand imagery up to whatever you can find on a stock photography website? I'm Jeb Graff, and I'd like you to consider getting in touch with me for your custom photography, for your custom brand needs. I've worked with people across the United States to make photography that tells your story better and more effectively than any search on a stock site could. And I'd like to work with you too. So go to jebgraff.com contact to leave stock behind and say hello to imagery that's as custom as your brand. That's J-E-B-B-G-R-A-F-F dot com slash contact. Talk to you soon. So, Jamie, we asked a question of all of our guests who join us. Um, the same question. Um, what, did, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm still growing up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's an interesting question, Jeremy, because when I was, younger, um, I wanted to be a doctor. And one of the reasons why I wanted to be a doctor was because of the research aspect of it. And I've always been very analytical. So I would say what I want to be when I grow up, what I realize is not to put yourself in a box, right? So to keep yourself open because you never know where you're headed next. So Ultimately, I would give a, this definitive answer. Yes, I want to be, you know, a doctor or I want to be, you know, an engineer. But ultimately what I want to be is happy in the space that I'm in. And I want to be able to make a positive impact. So it's interesting now when I think about what do I want to be when I grow up? happy. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good um, goal. Um, I know for me that there are different seasons of life. And, you know, if you'd asked me even three years ago, you know, would I be doing this today? Um, you know, on a Saturday morning as uh, when we're recording this right now, you know, and having fun and, and doing what I love, I, I probably wouldn't have said 
that I pictured this, right? Um, and uh, so, um, yeah, it's it's a it's always a journey, and I don't think that any of us are ever done growing up. And uh, so, um, I don't know. I guess we'll have to circle back around when we're all um, in our sixties and see where we're at. Make sure that we're all still thriving and, and doing what we love. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's really important is to be able to evolve and thrive and be happy and, you know, bloom where you're planted. Yeah. If you like what you heard today, you can hear more every week from us by opting into our email newsletter. Simply go to jeremytutor.com and sign up today. We promise we're not going to spam your inbox. We simply send one email each week with our expert career coaching advice. Thanks for tuning in and keep thriving.